символика коровы в латышском фольклоре. В латышских фольклорно-мифологических текстах, таких как дайны, старинные народные песни, поверья и волшебные сказки, образная символика коровы весьма значима и многообразна. Описательно сравнительная метафорика позволяет рассматривать ее как прообраз великой матери, чрево которой является вместилищем сакрального напитка – молока. Корова – обладательница и дарительница богатства, заступница женщин и сирот, посредница хтонических божеств – Мары и Лаймы. В фольклорном, фольклорном материале особое место занимает образ пестой коровы. При эпидемиях чумы, при стихийных бедствиях и тому подобное, самой сильной искупительной жертвой богам считалась корова. В крестьянском быту корова особенно почиталась и оберегалась. В праздник летнего солнцестояния на Иванов день, латышская Яню Дена, ее рога украшали цветочными венками, коров угощали лакомствами и помечали оберегами от дурного глаза, так как в этот день ведьмы могли отбирать у них молоко. The research of animal symbols has become a new tendency since the dawn of last century, when amount of research and doctoral thesis devoted to this theme has grown. The number of mentioned brute domestic wild animals in Latvian folklore is vast, but their symbolic coverage is dense and should be viewed as an artifact from deeper levels of, levels of folklore. One of the most important animals in maintaining family is the cow, uh, which has multiple ways of producing food and in various transformations, for example, growth from milk to curd to cheese, in mythological concepts becomes was nomenclature of complicated symbolic signs. As the theme of my doctoral thesis is connected to the hectonical world and its representatives in Latvian folklore, and my supervisor, Professor Janina Kursita, deals with scientific research of Latvian mythology, mythology of wall, we agree that I will cover this specific theme and Janina Kursita will sum up the general interpretative part. Um, I choose theme, uh, themes uh, from Latvian folk songs, fairy tales and beliefs, which represent the co in three categories. First category, the co as a symbol of fertility, productiveness and projection of great mother. Second, the co as a part of cosmological process connected to the land and cotonical beginnings. And third, the cow was an ambivalent representative of ready-made tonical cosmos. I found various similarities in the folklore of Latvian, Scandinavian, Indian, Slavic and other, other cultures. For instance, Latvian fairy tales about golden apple tree and silver spring uh, were the theme of stepmother or witch slaying the cow from the pea or golden apple found in her insides as golden apple tree grows, which in Latvian folklore tradition is a part of cosmic tree or so-called the tree of sun. The cow is sacrificed or allowed to be sacrificed, so the world in the image of the a cosmic tree can be made. There are, so, there are also parallels with Indian mythology where creator Brahma is represented as a sacrificed cow, which during the ritual created cosmos. Firstly, and possibly mildly, the cow is a symbol of tonical goddess Mara in various zoomorphic forms. Uh, Mara can be manifested herself as a toad, a fish, a bug, and also as a cow. In the ancient nine-day week, uh, fourth day eve of week, uh, was blessed as the day when dear Mara appeared. In other words, were born. In these uh, 50 day eves, Mara mostly appeared in the shape of cow. Uh, it was believed that in these three homes where Mara was warmly welcomed, domestic animals would be healthy, give lots of milk, and the milk itself was healthy. Mara was the guardian of both animals and humans, the great mother. 
It might seem uh, that this motive can only be applied to ancient classic long gone times, but I believe that image of Mara as a co and a guardian has stepped also in the 20th century and appear in critical moments. For instance, in memories of Latvian sent to deep north, a symbolic symbol of Ko appear particular similar to the Maras alias the Ko. This event takes place uh, deep in tundra where no domestic animals could have lived. A bridge of imprisoned Latvian women were maintaining a roof of the barracks uh, when one of them uh, see a black cow beneath her. He shooted and pointed out it uh, to other women and all of them went down the roof to see what this miracle cow is all about. As they descend, the barracks crumbled and crashed. This woman did not connect this miracle escape with Mara, as she did not uh, the, know the concept of Mara at all. But she said, when we came down, the cow was gone, but we all had seen it. As mentioned before, uh, goddess Mara is the guardian of cows, the enhance of milk. In folklore texts, she is called a cow mother, milk mother or marshava. He is asked to bless the cows as in this example. In Latvian languages, Mīļa māra piena māte svētī manas rājbaliņas dodi pienu, dodi sieru, dodi labu ganu zemi. In English, dear māra milk mother, bless my cows, give milk, give cheese, give a fertile land. Uh, even too, uh, Mara is mostly addressed as dear Mara. She is the goddess of chthonical ambivalence, therefore is both, the, is both the giver of life and the taker of life. Um, black call nine miles fort and nine miles black back, uh, who wants to live shall die, who wants to die shall live, stay healthy. These words use it to cheat sickness, uh, so it's go away. In other incantations, Mara is called upon to feed cow wreckers, witches, wizards who want to steal cow's milk. Uh, very often in fairy tales, the cow appears in initiation rites of poverty. Example, a boy escaping from various supernational beasts hides in the stomach of a cow. The cow accidentally eats the boy, as in period of initiation, the boy has become little, in other words, tom tom, in Russian folklore, malchik is palchik. It's important to note uh, in this story the boy to be initiated and eaten with various slops and therefore is dehumanized and can be interpreted as the boy's return to the body and womb of great mother, just to be reborn in a new image. The cow is this story, in these stories is the anthropogenic creator. The cow in fairy tales often is a magical helper of sorts. In the fairy tale orphan girl and mother's daughter in the well, sour and forest, the cow is the one that gives smart advice and physically protects the orphan girl from various dangers. Mara also is a guardian of orphans and in the image of Kom, Ko, helps them uh, to go through the initiation of poverty. Those who go through this process become orphans for a time. They are to be sent away from, the, from home by their parents to become dependent and after tests starting uh, their grown up independent lives. And Mara, in the image of Ko, helps with either advice or physical shelter. The Ko is a symbol of earth creative power. In beliefs, the Ko is sacrificed to stop poor harvest. Uh, for example, in the time of famine, they gathered money to buy a Ko and sacrifice it. Or if one saw a Ko in dreams, it was a signal for good harvest. The cow uh, sacrifice is notion to great mother and uh, so-called sado ritual and is connected with early pre perceptions of fertility gods, which are preyed upon so the land is fertile. If this, gone, uh, if this uh, does not happen, the body of god Enti is sacrificed, so it is reborn and land fertility is restored. And 
it is also connected with Ko Asmara, God containing elements of God, uh, of Great Mother, and is connected to the tonical uh, fertile land notion. Uh, in the in date uh, provided by modern field research, the Ko is a sacred animal. Usually narrators share their emotion stories when one or has to sell or otherwise lose the, a Ko. The emotional attachment to Ko is a deep as to a family member and mother feeder. And if Ko is represent, uh, rep if Ko is present a homestead, uh, one can die or uh, famine and so forth. Nowadays, for a woman to be called as a Ko is an insult as she will compare herself with a, with a huge, clumsy body. But in fairy tales and incantations, a Ko and a woman often are the same, same, uh, same entities to hypostasis. Especially in initiation fairy tales where a woman uh, goes through a chain of metamorphosis events. At first becoming a being who eats dead bodies, later a co and only in the end a human again. Person uh, worthy of her husband, uh, the new husband must get right of women's uh, crowing to eat dead bodies which, uh, with a uh, no weapon, hitting her in, uh, with a rowan tree stick. She turns back uh, to begin in a co and only then back, to a, in, back in a human body. In similar incantations such as uh, the women in the house are as well as the cows are. They are connected connection between woman and the cow. It is possible that in this example the cow embodies the archetype of a mother in both positive and negative light. It is similar to a mother who acts both in God and bad ways to prepare her child to life in society. Uh, Latvian believe uh, that the black and white colored cow is the most productive milk giver. Mara are located as a multicolored cow as a sign of goodwill, but she mostly appears as a black cow, which is a sign of her tonical nature. Folklore of Latvian's western part, mm, which could be influenced by Finno Agrian nation, the Livonians talks also about a blue cow, which has become from the sea. But mostly Latvian cows are brown, and therefore are called the brown ones. And famous Latvian bonbons, little cows, cowies, are brown colored. But nowadays you won't find a lot of brown cows in, cows in Latvian rural landscape, because most Latvian cows are multicolored, more productive, and have been bought from the Holland and other countries. If traditional Latvian brown cows uh, could be looked upon as a personality, smart cows, and each had also a name, usually cows are named after rivers in Latvia. I must, uh, must add that multicolored ones are purely uh, for recreational food purpose. They do not have farm space and are uh, killed at the end. What kind of milk way we get from cows uh, who are separated from nature? It, is, it shan't be one mentioned in folk song, sweet magical drink which gives powers for each person who drinks it in winter, and summer solstice, the cycle of the world. In Latvian mythopoetic scenery, the cow takes an important place. Still, these animals are not so important as they were before World War II, when to kill a cow, even if a cow is sick, was almost unimaginable. It was like to kill a human. In modern hypermarket food chain, the cow is what it gives – milk, butter, cheese, meat. It is far from perception of holy sacrifice, perception of holiness itself, which can take upon zoomorphic bodies to test pupils' life and behavior. Mostly pupils nowadays are indifferent to what happens to the sorts of food, be it fish, sheep, or cow, or something else. And yet something from the vast 
symbolic notions of coal has been kept in thinking. When visiting countryside, urban people want to decorate cow's horns with flowers as their ancestors did and to pet its wet nose, to scratch its head and to look into its big, big deep eyes. Has something symbolic left there? Who knows? Thank you.